In 1669, on the streets of Hamburg, Germany, a common scene unfolded. A disheveled man, bucket in hand, would wait outside restrooms every day, asking passers-by, could you spare some of your urine for me? Many thought him a madman, giving him a wide berth. Yet, unbeknownst to them, this so-called lunatic was about to benefit the world with urine. The man begging for urine on the streets was named Henning Brand. Born in 1630 to an ordinary family in Hamburg, Germany, Brand's limited family means led him to an early start in a factory as an apprentice in glass manufacturing. However, when war broke out, he enlisted in the army. Due to his outstanding performance on the battlefield, Brand was appointed as a land officer, dramatically elevating his social status from obscurity. Consequently, upon his discharge, he did not return to the glass factory but chose to pursue a career in commerce. His growing success in business and marriage to a wealthy merchant's daughter further enriched Brand's life. Originally, Brand's family wealth was more than sufficient for a comfortable life. However, in medieval Western Europe, alchemy was highly popular. This so-called alchemy can be considered the foundation of contemporary chemistry. Its main study was how to extract precious metals, especially gold, from base metals. Gold, being one of the earliest precious metals discovered and used by humans, along with its rarity and unique qualities, has always been revered as the king of metals. It has been a part of human history across various eras and cultures, fervently sought after by both the rich and poor. In the 17th century, when natural science was still undeveloped, a profession imbued with theological overtones emerged, the alchemist. This sparked an alchemical wave across Europe. As academia evolved, concepts like the philosopher's stone, purported to grant immortality, also emerged. From a modern scientific perspective, it's clear that other metals cannot be transformed into gold. However, in that era of undeveloped natural science, even renowned scientists like Newton attempted alchemy. The quest to produce gold, a symbol of wealth and status, led many to passionately pursue the career of an alchemist, and Brand was no exception. Though he was financially stable after returning from the military and engaging in business, his humble and challenging childhood left a significant impact. He was not content with slowly accumulating wealth through business and dreamt of extracting gold from base metals to amass great fortune. Moreover, compared to other novice alchemists, Brand had a foundation. He had learned glassmaking in his youth, which gave him familiarity with transmutation and manufacturing. Thus began Brand's fervent journey into alchemy. In the early stages of alchemy, Brand, like others, attempted to refine gold using a large quantity of cheap metals or those with a color similar to gold, combined with some chemical elements. As expected, his experiments, like those of other alchemists, failed. Despite these failures, Brand continued to invest heavily in alchemy, even spending a fortune on books about the art, devoting all his thoughts to it. This obsession soon led to discontent from his wife. After all, a man engrossed in alchemy and neglecting his family was hard to bear, and his wife soon passed away in sorrow. After his wife's death, Brand married another wealthy woman, who brought a substantial dowry. He used this dowry to build an alchemy laboratory, firmly believing in his eventual success. His second wife frequently argued with him over this, but Brand was so immersed in alchemy that no one could stop his pursuit. However, with frequent failures in his experiments, Brand's confidence was deeply shaken. One day, while using the restroom, he noticed that human urine was also yellow like gold. He mused to himself, they're both yellow, could urine also contain gold? At this point, Brand, driven mad by his quest for alchemy, started the scene described at the beginning, often squatting near public toilets and asking people, could you spare some of your urine for me? For this, Brand was often ridiculed as a pervert. Helplessly, he kept explaining, I'm not crazy, but no one believed him, making urine collection difficult. Desperate, he started enlisting the help of friends and family to collect urine, a move that utterly infuriated his wife. Coming from a wealthy family, his wife found Brand's alchemical pursuits both absurd and embarrassing. When Brand escalated his efforts, asking people for urine daily, she reached her limit and confronted him, you lunatic, stop this madness, or we're getting a divorce. Brand could only plead, trust me, this time I will succeed. Faced with Brand's confident demeanor, 
his wife eventually relented and let him continue his endeavors. Alongside mobilizing friends and family, Brand also leveraged his former military connections to acquire large quantities of urine from the troops, nearly depleting his finances. Ultimately, he gathered about 6,000 liters of urine, filling his laboratory with an unbearable stench. Brand, however, was undeterred by the odor and quickly began his experiments. While others thought him driven mad by his desire for wealth, little did they know, he was about to turn urine into gold. Unfazed by public opinion or the foul smell in his laboratory, Brand devoted himself to his research. Through distillation, he evaporated the urine and extracted a black substance. Holding the black material in his hands, he imagined it transforming into gold. Using urine for alchemy was an unprecedented path, with no existing experimental references. Brand, after consulting numerous alchemical texts and attempting to refine the black material using various chemicals, was met with disappointment. Instead of the coveted gold, he was left with a white powdery substance. Although unfamiliar with this white powder and recognizing it was not the gold he sought, Brand paid it little attention, collecting it aside. After processing all the urine, he only had the white powder to show for it. Consequently, he closed his laboratory, abandoning alchemy to return to a normal life. One night, when Brand reopened his laboratory to retrieve some items, he was startled to find a mysterious blue-green glow emanating in the dark room. Approaching bravely, he realized the light was coming from the white powder he had extracted from urine. Although he didn't produce gold, this glowing substance, which Brand had never seen before, thrilled him. He named the white powder, Greek phosphorus, meaning, bearer of light, corresponding to what is now known as the element phosphorus, with the chemical symbol P. Initially, Brand thought white phosphorus was the legendary, philosopher's stone, of immortality. After six years of research, he found no commercial value in phosphorus, using it only as a source of light at night. His obsession with research nearly depleted his finances, and his business declined, plunging him into a financial crisis. To solve his financial issues, Brand had no choice but to sell the method of extracting phosphorus. Although this quickly helped him overcome his financial crisis, he nearly lost the historical honor of being known as the discoverer of phosphorus. After selling the method of extracting phosphorus, one of Brand's buyers was Daniel Kraft. He used the luminescence of phosphorus to perform in European courts, earning a considerable sum. Kraft later sold some phosphorus samples to the chemist Robert Boyle, making another profit. Boyle is known as the father of modern chemistry and a foundational figure in the field. Boyle's 1661 book, The Skeptical Chemist, had a profound impact on the development of chemistry, marking that year as the birth of modern chemistry. In his later years, Boyle achieved results in the production and study of phosphorus and phosphides. After further research, Boyle noted, phosphorus only glows in the presence of air, when burned in air, it forms white smoke which quickly reacts with water to form an acidic solution, known as phosphoric acid. Heating phosphorus with a strong base produces a gas, phosphine, which ignites upon contact with air, forming wisps of white smoke. This was the earliest introduction to the properties of phosphorus. During Boyle's research on phosphorus, the method of extracting phosphorus from urine became widely known in the alchemy circle. More and more people started refining white phosphorus from urine, hoping to discover its commercial value and amass wealth. At this time, as Brand had withdrawn from the alchemical community, almost no one knew who had first discovered phosphorus. As phosphorus became more widely used, some people began falsely claiming to be its discoverer, hoping to gain fame and fortune. It wasn't until an informed individual found detailed notes on the discovery of phosphorus from Brand's family that people realized, Henning Brand was indeed the first to discover phosphorus. However, what Brand had discovered was specifically, white phosphorus, which is harmful to humans. In the early 19th century, white phosphorus was used in match production. Although matches made with white phosphorus were highly flammable and effective, they were unsafe due to their propensity to self-ignite, leading to their discontinued use. It wasn't until 1845 that Austrian chemist Anton Schroeder refined red phosphorus from white phosphorus. Red phosphorus has a higher ignition point than white phosphorus and is non-toxic when burned, leading to its application in match production, a practice that continues to this day. As more chemists began to study phosphorus, its applications broadened significantly. 
Phosphorus exists in three allotropes, yellow phosphorus, red phosphorus, and black phosphorus. Yellow phosphorus is the most important as it is the basic raw material for producing red phosphorus and various phosphorus compounds. Therefore, mass-producing inexpensive yellow phosphorus is crucial for manufacturing a range of phosphorus compounds. Since 1830, many countries have attempted to mass-produce yellow phosphorus, but the technology was not ideal. It wasn't until 1888 that the UK first used an electric furnace to produce yellow phosphorus, marking a new chapter in the history of its production. The world's first industrial phosphorus electric furnace began operating in France in 1891. In 1927, Germany industrialized the production of sodium phosphate using the electrothermal method. This substance is useful in various fields such as detergents, pharmaceuticals, coatings, fertilizers, and feed. Particularly, phosphorus fertilizers have been highly successful in agriculture. Phosphorus is one of the important substances in plants, playing a crucial role in cell growth and reproduction. Phosphorus fertilizers enhance the growth of plant roots, allowing plants to mature quickly, significantly advancing agricultural development. However, as a combustible material, white phosphorus has also been used in warfare. During World War II, American scientists developed a white phosphorus bomb called Hellfire. This incendiary bomb, once in contact with human skin, causes instant self-ignition that cannot be extinguished by external forces, not even with water. Moreover, burning white phosphorus releases large amounts of toxic gases, and severe cases can lead to acute liver necrosis. Due to the horrendous effects of white phosphorus bombs, they were eventually banned as a weapon by various countries. It can be said that the discovery of phosphorus profoundly changed the world. Whether in everyday life, agriculture, or military development, phosphorus plays an indispensable role. As the earliest discoverer of phosphorus, Henning Brand likely had no idea that the phosphorus he stumbled upon in his quest for alchemy would have such a significant impact on human society. Brand initially pursued alchemy to become wealthy overnight, obsessively experimenting with any yellow substance, which led him to experiment with urine. This seemingly mad approach is hard for most people to understand. However, from another perspective, many researchers possess a spirit of perseverance. They disregard societal views, persist in their endeavors, and seek success amid countless failures. Although Brand's discovery of phosphorus was somewhat accidental, if not for his persistent scientific spirit, phosphorus might not have been discovered so early.